many Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, Flesh and Blood, and other standard size trading card game players ask the question, when is a box much more than a box? Answer, when it costs more, but also when it does more in the way of guarding and protecting your precious cardboard. I would also imagine some Yu-Gi-Oh! players ask that question, but here at Tolarian Community College there simply is no way of knowing, because this video will focus on standard size trading card accessories only, and as such we'll look at the uh, Deck Fist Milk Carton Deck Box from Kaka Popo. The Deck Case LX Flip Boxes from BCW. The brand new Return to Earth Ecologically Responsible Boulder Deck Boxes from Ultimate Guard. And the Ultra Pro Cube, a compact new reimagining of their ever popular tower. But never mind Return to Earth, are any of these deck boxes ones that you're going to wish you could return to your game store? Save yourself all that hassle and join me, won't you, while we take a look. First up, it's called the Deck Fist from Kakapopo, because it's shaped like a milk carton and you drink a carton of milk at breakfast if you live in the 1970s. And nothing sounds more appealing for breakfast than something from a company called Kakapopo. I'm not joking. We've reviewed them before. That's their real name. It's apparently inspired by a bird in New Zealand, the kakapo. But someone already had a company called that, so... Kaka Popo for breakfast. I mean, deckfast. The lid slides off and has a compartment for dice and counters. And the box holds 100 double-sleeved cards, all of which is good. But what isn't good is that it does not close when holding said 100 double-sleeved cards. Which in my nearly eight years as a professional reviewer of cardboard accessories is something I would list as critically important. The deck box needs to be able to close. Took me a good long while to figure this one out. At first I tried changing the brand of sleeves. There's no other way that the cards fit in the box. I thought I was losing my mind. The only way I could get it to close was by removing the sliding panel for the dice and token compartment, rendering that function useless, but at least allowing it to close. And so obviously that's not the right way to do it, but oh wait, it is. Checking their official website, the deck box does need you to remove the sliding panel if you wish to use sleeved cards, which of course you do. Every game listed on the side of the DeckFast carton is going to want to use sleeved cards. That's the point of accessories. The fact that this is, by design, impossible to close on sleeved cards wobbles my mind. Why not literally just make it a tiny, tiny bit Taller. I reserve fail grades for the most spectacular of disasters. Sleeves that come out of the pack split, boxes that damage your cards, and now, at last, I can add to that pantheon the deck fist from Kaka Popo, a deck box that was designed not to close on sleeved cards, thus utterly failing in the most basic premise of a box, the part where it needs to close. Price is $12.99 US, absurd, both in design and cost. Look, in contrast, at the Deck Case LX from BCW. This is what I call a product that is satisfactorily a box. There's nothing too special about this flip box, pretty standard fare. Long-term viewers of my channel know I have never been much impressed with the typical flip box, but at least it will close when sleeved cards are in it. The LX is a fairly nice polyurethane pleather exterior with appealing stitch work. Magnets are minimal and won't stand up to much shaking, or any, but while it popping open easily is definitely a disappointment, at least it closes. Oh, and these cost less than the Deck Fist at a price of about $9.99 each. BCW has always been one of the best go-to companies for budget buys, and while I can't give this much more than a satisfactory grade because, again, it is just a basic top flip box, the price and quality of material is enough to add a plus to its satisfactory grade. C+. Plus. I'd rather have a bag full of these any day than a bag full of Kakapopo deckfists.
Next up from Ultimate Guard is a much anticipated new product, the Return to Earth Ecologically Responsible Boulders. Boulders are one of my favorite deck boxes on the market, not only an A product, but they are what I personally use for my own collection. So I was very eager to look at this new line of ecologically friendly ones. Made from 97% renewable resources and packaged with grass paper packaging, the deck box is recyclable and holds up to 100 double sleeved or 120 single sleeved cards. In addition to this, there are no animal-based materials, plasticizers, or melamine used in its manufacture. To top it all off with the purchase of this product, you directly support global reforestation because Ultimate Guard has teamed up with One Tree Planted and are planting 10 trees a day. And this is just the beginning as Ultimate Guard has pledged to transform more of its product line into sustainably produced, ecologically friendly products like this. As far as the actual dimensions on the box go, this is the same as any other boulder. It will hold more or less exactly 100 double-sleeved cards. Here I have 100 double-sleeved in Dragon Shield outers with Dragon Shield inners. And there's not really room for anything else, but it does close. It will hold together very tight. Same as a regular boulder. This is not going to come undone. Ooh, good, nice, solid, sturdy feel. However, there are some things I noticed, and I don't know if this is my prejudice and knowing that this is made from sustainable recycled materials, but I did spot some things I want to point out. So there's a lot of weird aesthetic imperfections, nothing major, just random discolorations, a few marks. The interior has a, a strange look to it. Again, I need to stress this is all an aesthetic thing and it's relatively minor. To the touch, it feels fine and normal. I just imagine that since they are working with recycled and renewable materials, you get results like this. And that is not a negative in and of itself, but I did feel I should point it out. The biggest thing that stood out to me is the weird curvature interior of of the box. A bit hard to fully capture on camera, but you can see how this is curved in a way that regular boulders are not. To double check, I'll open up two more boulders from fresh packaging. I'm just doing this right here on camera. I have no idea what will happen if I pop these open. Oh, there's a little bit of debris inside that one. That happened with one of the ones I already opened, actually. I imagine, again, that's all part of the manufacturing process, but it's worth noting. However, here's the real thing. Look, these have a curve to them. Popping the lids on and off doesn't quite have the same crisp latch and pop feel that regular boulders do. The plastic feels softer, more malleable. Mixing and matching the lids work, but the closures aren't always exact. In fact, even when not mixed and matched, some, but not all, of my samples have gaps between lid and base. I suppose the question is just how important is the environment? to us versus a sleek and perfectly polished deck box. These function just fine. These function better than most deck boxes I've seen anywhere in all my years. They really are just like a boulder, only not as pretty and not by a lot, but there it is, is the curvature of them that I see in any way affecting or, or impacting the cards, not that I can tell, but it makes me a little nervous, a little uneasy. I'm trying my darndest to be fair and honest here, but I also must relay what I see. 
The Return to Earth boulders are still one of the most compact deck boxes on the market, and for most intents and purposes, they are no different than a regular Ultimate Guard boulder, but I don't know. Looking at all the overall quality issues, despite my honest-to-goodness tree-hugging, bleeding heart, I have to say the grade is a B+. I commend Ultimate Guard for their efforts, and I hope they continue this line and continue to strive for improvements. I'm excited to see what comes in the future, and given what an absolute hard-ass grader I am, a B plus is by no means a bad grade. But there it sits. Speaking of boulders, watch out Ultimate Guard, because Ultra Pro has taken your idea and brought to us a product design so absolutely obvious, it is amazing they did not do this sooner. But I'm so glad they have. The Ultra Pro Cube. The Ultra Pro Satin Cube is an Ultra Pro Satin Tower with the compartment for Dyson Tokens taken off. That's it. That's the product. And I love it, because I love the Satin Tower, a deck box I have called unbeatable in terms of price, quality, and function. So having a compact variation on it just makes so much sense. As someone with a lot of magic decks, and I mean a lot, there was a period in my life when I looked up at my shelf and saw upwards of 15 satin towers. And let me tell you, that took up a lot of space. With the cube, I can throw half a dozen in a backpack and keep it compact. But unlike the boulders, these hold over 120 double-sleeved cards. Upwards of 110 double-sleeved, or 100 double-sleeved and 20 single-sleeved. So you have something here that the boulder doesn't have. Extra space. I want to show you something. This is the actual Satin Tower from my very first deck box review over seven years ago. The exact one that you'll see me using in that video. It looks the same as it did seven years ago. I paid $9.99 for it. I think now it's $11.99, $12.99 at your local game store. But it's still in one piece and more or less other than a couple very minor things in the exact same state that I bought it in. And I've bought many, many more and many, many different satin towers and chrome towers. I don't know, they got names for them. I'm just gonna always call it satin. I know satin is just the finish on this one. Towers from Ultra Pro in those seven years. I've got a closet filled with them. I've never had one break. I've never had one even get terribly scratched up. And I've opened deck boxes from many other companies that will be scratched up and scuffed. I'm rough on them. I throw these things around. I toss this in a bag with other solid materials and toss it in my trunk and have done so for seven years. And here it is. And if I were to record this with the same camera, which is long since broken, and the same lighting, which is long since broken, as I did with that first video, you probably couldn't tell that it was seven years older. Here, we have the Satin Cube. It looks identical to me in every single way but one. It doesn't have the detachable bottom compartment. Other than that, and if I'm being fully honest with full disclosure, with these, all of them, I have many, some were sent to me by Ultra Pro, I already bought a bunch, they are a little tougher to get open. You gotta pull on it a little bit. And yeah, that is a thing that may, my wife complains about opening both the satin tower and the satin cube, and I've kind of gone like this a bit. But it also means 100 double-sleeved cards, one of my favorite commander decks in here, and I would bet you a month's pay that it is impossible for me to get this to pop open. That, if I literally, go like that. It's not going. It, it will not open. That's actually its biggest fault. If I have to say a con, Ultra Pro, a huge con. Gosh, I don't know if it's just that I have a little less leverage, but these are just a little tricky. Look at that. I did, I did have to struggle a bit to get it open, and that's a good thing to me. There's no safer place, reasonably, than inside a satin tower or a satin cube. It's firm. It's hard. It's a little over 10 bucks. And it's a solid, enthusiastic A. It's yet another variation on a winning product. It's affordable, highly functionable, and gives you, the player, another choice in meeting your needs with excellence. Like the tower line, the cube is indeed excellent and a solid A. Which is better, 
the cube or the boulder. These are both A quality items. They will meet the needs of different players. I actually like the boulder, even though I can only put exactly 100 double sleeved cards in it because it's more compact than the cube. The cube is a teeny bit larger because it holds a teeny bit more cards. For many Magic the Gathering players, that extra size of the cube will be worth it to put in 10 sleeved tokens in addition to their 100 double sleeved card commander deck. Or maybe you would rather have the compactness of the boulder. The boulder is also obviously really easy to open. Whereas I noted the cubes, whoo, you gotta kinda get a hang for it, how you kajigger it open. They are both excellent products. They meet the needs of different players. And to me, that's a win across the board. Hopefully, hopefully these videos, all of these videos, all 30 plus of these deck box videos that I've reviewed over seven years of this channel have been of some use in helping you decide not, oh, that's the one that got an A. A lot of them have gotten A's. I don't use every one that got an A in my personal collection, nor should you, would you? Which one is right for you? Maybe even some of the B or C quality deck boxes meet your needs. If your need is budget, BCW probably is the best bang for your buck. If you're not looking for excellence, but you just want a deck box at a good price, looking through their catalog and my reviews of their products may find what's right for you. I just hope you find what's right for you. And if I have done that. If I do this over the years, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, click that bell for notifications, share with a friend. You'll be helping me out when you do.